Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's take a few minutes and show you how I set up the Raspberry Pi to work with my new Yezu 891. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Before we jump into the video, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Before we jump into the setup, I want to show you guys uh, a few things that I chose for this particular build. And I'll leave a link to everything down in the description below if you're interested in picking up some of these products. Uh, I did choose the Maker Focus uh, Power Board. Uh, simply because it's got a fan uh, built into it and it's got a buck converter. So I can power this with 12 volts and it will reduce that down to 5 volts to feed into the Raspberry Pi. Next up, we've got the GPS uh, that I run and I've, you can see I've bought this one uh, three times already. I think I've actually bought it four. But anyway, this is the GPS I run and it works great with a Build-A-Pi script. For additional storage, I chose the SanDisk 128 gig uh, flash drive because it is super small and doesn't interfere with the other things that I need to plug into the USB ports on the back. This is the last item that I've added to the Pi uh, with the one last USB port that I did have available. And finally, this is the sound card that I chose for this build. And I chose this because I really wanted to shrink this package down as small as possible. Okay, so now on to setting up the radio and the Pi. I found this fantastic website, and again, I'll leave a link to this down in the description below. Uh, KD9CJX did a write-up on how to set up the 891 with FL Digi. Now, he's working on a Windows machine, so I skipped the vast majority of this. Uh, but if you come right here and look at this, these are the settings that I basically, well, can't get it highlight correctly. There we go. These are the settings that I went through and changed uh, before I started uh, setting up the Raspberry Pi. So if you want to pause the video right here, if you've got a brand new 891, this should help get you uh, get your radio configured and ready to go. Now let's go ahead and head over to the Pi. Okay, so I'm using the Build-A-Pi version 2, uh, and I think I installed most of the applications that were available. I might have skipped a few like Slow Scan TV um, and maybe one of the others, but for the most part, I installed everything on this particular Pi. You'll see right out of the gate, the GPS has already got a lock. All right, so let's start setting this thing up. Guys, this is super, super simple. Let's go over to the ham radio category and let's jump to FL rig and get that opened up. Now, I have not set up, uh, I didn't even do the customization, I'm sorry, I didn't even do the localizations for this computer. So you'll notice that my times uh, and things like that are not set. I'll go through and do that later. I just want to show you guys how to get it configured for the radio. So once we got FL Rig open, I'm going to click on Configure, Setup, and Transceiver. Once that box opens up, we're going to click in the Rig box and scroll down until we see the FT891. Now, uh, something here, you do want to make sure if you're running the 891 that you are building FL, uh, the FL Digi Suite from source. That will give you the very latest FL rig. You get a lot more uh, control and features for the 891 uh, if you've got the very latest one installed. Okay, so next right here where it says none, we're going to highlight, or I'm sorry, click the drop down box. Now you'll notice that we've got two USB Silicon Labs um, listings here. And I'm honestly not sure what the difference is until you get right down here at the very end. Everything looks identical except for this one is IF00, this one's IF01. I chose the IF00 and it seems to work. Now the baud rate, um, since we used 4800 according to the website that I showed you guys a while ago, I'm going to choose 4800 there. 
that's it we'll go ahead and click initialize and it'll take a couple of seconds for it to pick up and read everything on the radio all right once uh, that finishes up and initializes we can just close out of this box we've got the radio uh, configured with FL rig and just to verify that we can press the PTT button and I see that my rig just went into PTT mode so so far so good now that we've got FL rig uh, talking to the radio just make sure your radio is in data hyphen U mode uh, make sure this is set to 3000 that will open the filter up on uh, the radio and then you can set volume levels different squelches uh, noise blankers and finally your power output I leave mine at roughly 25 uh, watts most of the time for digital at least to start the connection and then if I need a little bit less to make the uh, contact or make the QSO I can turn that down as needed okay with this particular sound card uh, it does not have Vox built into it so due to that fact we need to make one change in the pat configure file so I'm just going to run pat configure and we'll let this uh, open up I'm going to start scrolling down until I find the RDOP section uh, of this configuration file now you'll see right here that it says RDOP and I'm looking for this line right here the PTT underscore control we want to change that from false to true Whoop, make sure you spell it right or you will hose this file and nothing will work correctly so I'm going to press control X Y and enter to get out now we do need to restart Pat uh, so that it will pick up that change in the configure file you can reboot uh, if you want to that would uh, solve it or you can run sudo kill all pat and then I'm going to run sudo system ctl space start space pat at pi now pi right here uh, if you haven't watched some of my earlier videos is the username that I've got right here so if you've changed your username, you would have to choose or change it right here to match. But since I'm still running the default Pi user, I can use this. And that takes care of restarting Pat. Now I'm just going to close out of the terminal for the time being. I'm going to open up uh, a file browser. And I'm going to come over to the Pat menu file. In the Pat menu file, I'm looking for this config file. I'm going to right click on that and say text editor we need to make just a couple of changes inside this file for the most part everything works uh, with the default settings the one thing I do need to change actually there's two things first of all is no call I'm going to change that to my call sign and then right down here at the bottom I'm going to change rig control no or rig control equals no to rig control equals yes going to press control s to save that file and control q to close out and that's it pat is now configured so if we run the pat menu command let's go ahead and start our r dot modem so we'll press option 2 and we'll give it a minute while the modem starts you'll see that it brings up our r dot gui uh, it's going to bring up the browser in just a second and one thing I am noticing I'm going to say allow here and I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and close this we're not going to make a WinLink connection right this second one thing I'm noticing right here is my receive level is super high so we need to kind of get that under control let's go right over here to our speaker icon let's right click and look for audio inputs and we're going to choose USB audio device right click again audio inputs and click on input device settings once this window opens up I'm going to go over to the options first and turn down or turn off auto gain control for playback you'll see automatically that took care of a lot of our level now we can reduce that even further if we need to 
using the slider controls here. Whoop, I don't want to go all the way off. Well, there we go. That was kind of odd for a second. But we can turn these up or down. You'll just have to play with this to get the settings uh, correct that you want. But our receive level is much better. We'll click OK here. And now if we wanted to, we could go ahead and make a connection. Um, because we added that PTT to true inside the configure file, we'll have no issues keying the radio. Okay, so now that we've got PAT configured and running correctly, let's see if we can't tackle JS8 call real quick. Once JS8 call opens up, I'm going to quickly add my call sign and my grid square. Let's jump over to the radio. And under rig, I'm going to choose FL rig, FL rig. The PTT method is going to be cat. I'm going to choose data and packet for my mode. And I'm going to use the split operation fake it. Let's go ahead and jump over to the audio tab. And it's already pulled in my audio settings. I'm um, sorry, my audio, my, my sound card. Uh, now the one thing I do, and I don't know why exactly, I've always chosen both right here. If somebody knows um, a better way to do this or exactly what that's for, leave it down in the comments below. I just know that it works for my setup. Uh, maybe I'm wrong on something, maybe it would be better going another route. But I've always done it this way, so I'm going to go ahead and choose both. Let's click OK. And let's just uh, expand this window out just a little bit and shrink this down. Now, here's a point in time that I like to use Pulse Audio. This is entirely up to you. Pulse Audio adds another level of control for us, but it also adds a level of complexity. I set the volume control while I go for PAT menu uh, or for uh, PAT WinLink connections. But if you'll notice, my volume is a little high right here. It's still in the green and probably still okay, but I prefer to run it down around 40. So I'm going to uh, come up to the menu, come down to sound and video, and open pulse audio control. On the recording tab now, you'll see that I have QT pulse audio 282861, uh, something like that. All I'm going to do is I'm going to start moving this slider to the left. And you guys can watch right down here in JS8 Call that level drop down. I'm just going to drop it until it gets to around 40. And I'm going to leave it right there. Now I can go ahead and close Pulse Audio. What this does is it leaves my master volume though alone and set the way I want it for PAT connections but I get, to, uh, I get a little bit more control and I can set an individual application here, uh, reduce that incoming volume level to around 40. And I just find that that works better for me. Once you've made that adjustment in Pulse Audio, you can close out of the application and it will stay right where we set it. That's it, we're uh, up and running on JS8 call. So now that we've got JS8 call configured, I'm just going to go ahead and close out of that. And let's go ahead and tackle WSJTX real quick. All right, once WSJTX opens, let's go up to file and settings. Again, my call sign and my grid square. And then let's head over to radio. Once again, I'm going to choose FL Rig, FL Rig. My PTT mode is going to be capped. Now, guys, if you are running a signal link, you would be able to leave this at Vox instead of using CAT, uh, both in WSJTX and in JS8 Call. Now, let's head over to Audio, and you'll see that it has pulled in my audio uh, card again automatically. So that's the uh, ALSA output USB-C media and then USB-C media again uh, for my input and my output. Let's go ahead and choose OK here 
and I'm just going to verify that when uh, I swap to a different band here, I'm going to get the change over in FL Rig as well. Uh, once again, you notice that my receive level seems to be a little bit high, so let me get uh, this out of the way here, and we can come over and open up Pulse Audio. Now, just like before, you'll see that uh, we have this here. Now, I'm under the Recording tab again, and if we start sliding this to the left, we can watch that uh, volume drop down to right around 40. Might be a little bit high still on that. Oop, it jumped on me. Let's see. There we go. So, right around 40. Again, we have individual level controls over each application. Uh, the one downside to this is every time I open JS8 Call or WSJTX, I do have to open Pulse Audio and make that little adjustment. Doesn't seem to want to remember uh, the settings from the previous session. Not sure why that is. Uh, if I ever figure that out, I'll be sure to update you guys. Okay, so there's a quick look at uh, my setup, what I'm running uh, on the Raspberry Pi, and how I configure the Pi to the Yezu 891. Now, before we close, let's talk a little bit about the 891. This is another question that I've been asked several times. Why did I choose the 891? Well, A, I've been a Yezu fan um, since I got my license. I own two 857s, so staying with Yezu just kind of makes things a bit easier for me because I kind of understand the way Yezu does things when it comes to uh, interfacing with uh, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, their menu system is fairly familiar with me, even going to the 891, uh, since I did come from the 857, so that was part of it. Cost is another portion of it. Uh, it's a great rig for, you know, roughly 600 bucks. Form factor is another big one for me. The form factor is almost identical to the 857. Also, I'm not a QRP fan. I prefer 100 watt radios. If I need to cut the 891 or the 857 down to conserve battery power, I can reduce either rig to 5 watts. I cannot take something like a KX3 or the new ICOM 705 and boost them up to 100 watts. Well, at least not without an amplifier. And I'm trying to simplify my setup, not add more to it. The one thing, and I'm still frustrated with Yezu over this, I wish the 891 had 2 meter 440 like the 857 did. Uh, to me, that, that's probably one of the biggest reasons I held off on the 891 for so long. To overcome that, uh, I'm still kind of toying with some ideas. Uh, I think what I'm going to end up doing is using uh, one of my little Yezu FT65 radios uh, with a roll-up J-Pole and the MobiLink um, TNC. Then I can connect the Raspberry Pi to the MobiLint and have access to that Yezu uh, HT if I do want to try a packet connection. Not the ideal setup, but uh, it's basically the easiest thing I can come up with that still keeps the, uh, my entire setup as lightweight as possible. I really don't want to add a second uh, radio in there just to do 440 and uh, 2 meter that's a full-blown mobile rig. Uh, I think I'm just gonna stay with the HT for the time being. Now, I did uh, a video in the past on how to connect the MobiLink TNC to the Raspberry Pi. I'll leave a link to that uh, either right up at the top or right down in the description below. All right, guys, I hope this helps you get your 891 configured with the Raspberry Pi. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.